I've been talking about studying relativity using this special hyperbola graph paper designed by my colleague Tom Moore at Pomona College, or at least used by him, and using this graph paper to do relativity in space-time diagrams without the need to do any equations, because the equations essentially are built into the presence of the hyperbolas drawn on the graph paper. I've been talking about how to do that. I want to do an example now to talk about how we can use this graph paper to figure out answers to questions in different observers' Uh, different observers' perspectives on this diagram. And so uh, this is the same example I've been using for a little bit. Zach is moving at speed two-thirds times the speed of light, two-thirds light years per year, uh, passes by Alice, who's sitting still in the frame of this diagram. Uh, he's moving two-thirds C in Alice's reference frame. He passes by Alice at time equals zero at the origin of the diagram. And so this line at two, with a slope of three halves, three, three years for every two light years that he travels, this line is Zach's path. The, dashed, the dark dashed line here is Zach's perception of time equals zero. We figured that out, that to find an observer's time slices, the things they perceive to be simultaneous, you just look at how far down from vertical their path is tilted, and you tilt the same angle up from horizontal, and that's what tells you what that time slice should be. All right, so given that, Alice sees a supernova happen. Alice sees the supernova at time equals seven years, and position equals eight light years away from, as measured relative to the origin, when Zach flew by. We want to know, what does Zach measure for those things? Now again, you can do this in relativity in lots of ways. If you're skilled with doing Lorentz transformation equations in, in relativity, you can do that right away. If you are practiced at using space-time interval calculations and the metric equation. You can put in x equals two-thirds t and solve, do some algebra to solve there. I want to talk about how to find the answers directly from this diagram, directly from way, the way this diagram works. And to begin with, I want to know what are Zach's t and x values. Well, to find Zach's time, it's actually really easy. We know that simultaneous events for Zach correspond to lines at this particular slope, at this slope of two-thirds, two-thirds, uh, slope of two-thirds, so two light years up for every three light years over. Though that is simultaneity for Zach. So I know that if these events are simultaneous for Zach, so are these, so are these, so are these, and so are these, and so are these. In particular, if I can draw a line that go at this slope that goes right through the supernova's event, that will tell me that that will tell me what time what time slice for Zach that supernova took place on. So let me do that. It's at this point, all I need to do is draw a line with slope two-thirds centered at that point. Or well that passes not centered, that passes through that point. Let me see if I can do that. Slope two-thirds. Two-thirds. Two thirds, get the longest baseline for my drawing that I can. Uh, drawing on a board like this is always a pain. All right, let's see what I can do. I use dashed lines for time slices just to make my, myself a little less confused. So this is another time slice for Zach. I've drawn a dashed line that goes through that supernova. So all these points are points that Zach perceives to be at the same moment as the supernova. So how do I know what Zach's time is for this? It's actually really easy. I just have to say, look at Zach. What was the time on Zach's watch on this dashed line? Where is that? Well, I just follow the dashed line from this event, a time slice, follow it down to right here. That's the place where the time slice with the supernova on it intersects with Zach himself, with Zach's own path. At that point, that, all I have to do is figure out what time has passed for Zach at that point. Well, let's look at it. I can count hyperbola crossings, just as usual. One, two, and a bit. I'd say probably two and a quarter, because here's three up here, two, two and a quarter along there. Another way I could do it is to look it's between the two-year and the three-year hyperbolas. How far in between? Well, again, it looks like about a quarter of the way. 
So I would say that the time, as measured by Zach, is about two and a quarter, I'll say about two and a quarter years. That's how I find is that the time that Zach would say this took place. It's about two and a quarter years after the first one. And again, that's just saying what time slice did the event I care about happen on? And what was the time for Zach when that time slice intersects with Zach's world line, Zach's path on this diagram? The other question, of course, is how far away from the origin does Zach think the supernova took place? And here we do exactly the opposite process. We say, well, we need to figure out what point on Zach's t equals zero line corresponds to the position of that thing, and to do that, of that supernova. And to do that, I just want to say, well, where was the star that went supernova? Where was that star back at time equals zero? Assuming that it was sitting, that, that position was sitting still in Zach's frame. Yeah, that's always the question. Where, where is the position now that the star eventually went supernova in Zach's frame? We don't know how the star is moving. We haven't talked about that. But where is that position in Zach's frame? Well, you know, basically, the idea is if it was three light years away here and I go backward in time, it's still three light years away. So the position is moving forward the same speed that I am. So all I have to do is draw a line parallel to Zach's own motion. Those are lines of constant position. In Zach's, from Zach's perspective. Those, that's a line of constant position from Zach's perspective. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line with slope 3 halves through this event that I care about. I'm going to try to anyway. Hello, slope. Let's draw a line. And hope I haven't gotten too well. OK, that's not a perfect line. But it does the job. That line with slope 3 halves parallel to Zach's own path through that, through that supernova point, intersects the time equals time slice right here. That's the place where those lines intersect. Now when I look at that, again, I count this off the same way I would have otherwise. Here's the x equals zero point, the origin for Zach, and I count one, two, three, four, and a half, four and a third, maybe four and a third, light years along this path. I'm just counting hyperbola crossings along the time equals zero line. Once I've extrapolated backward, following a path parallel to Zach's to the t equals zero line, I can use the hyperbolas to count. And so I get x for Zach is roughly, what did I say? I can do it another way. I can follow the hyperbolas down about four and one third light years is my x for Zach distance. That gives me a position and a time as measured by Zach for that event. And again, this all comes directly out of using hyperbola graph paper to find at least eyeballed estimates of numerical values for calculations in relativity. And I haven't had to do a single calculation. All I have to do is look at the event and say, I'm going to follow time slices back to Zach's path to find the time. I'm going to follow spatial, spatial travel parallel to Zach's parallel to Zach's travel, back to the t equals zero slice to find the distance. And that will give me my answer for what Zach would say those coordinates are. And I'll bet that if we did the calculation, we would find that these, that these would come up with the same value for delta s squared. Uh, incidentally, it's going to be a negative number because I'm in this right-hand side. The hyperbola is over here. Everything that's more than the speed of light away uh, over to the side is going to be a negative delta s squared, but don't worry about that. We pretend it's an imaginary number or something. It works out fine. But that's, that's how this comes out. You'll find we'll come up with basically the same answers this way. You can try it at home and check how close we came, but the point is we don't need to do the math because we've gotten it right off the diagram. I like this way of doing relativity because it lets you just visualize things and read things off a diagram, and it gives you a real sense of how simultaneity works which I never got when I was first learning this purely from equations.